create a blurry dot effect in Affinity Photo, PC or Mac. We can do it using procedural textures. Procedural texture is a brilliant filter. And I'm just gonna go over now to the filters menu. You need obviously an open image or just a layer, but it needs to be something filled with something, say black or white or something like this. So filters and go down to colors and procedural texture. So procedural texture is there. And as always, there's nothing in it. Must admit, that's one thing that I really would love to see slightly different. However, let's just go and choose the one that I'm gonna be using. This is a preset. You should have this preset, smooth bars. It's a great starting point. And this is the case for most of these procedural textures. You can start from the existing preset. So once you've got that, what you can also do, which is really nice, you can drag this out a bit, make it a little bit bigger. So now you've got the image there, you can see this, these bars, and you've got these custom inputs. Now with the custom inputs, I'm gonna add a few more. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna modify this one. Say you want it diagonally, these lines. Well, you can just go bracket and then plus RY bracket. As soon as you do that, or you could put RX minus RY. So you can see RX plus RY and you get nice diagonal lines. Well, you can also, of course, modify these. You could put maybe a sign around and there's a lot of functions that are available inside Affinity Photo that you can use. So I'm just gonna put a sign around them. S-I-N bracket and then RX. And as soon as you do that, you can see it obviously changes slightly, but that's gonna modify it a bit more later. So, okay, now, now you can see what's happened. You've got this nice blurry effect, sign X around those and sign RY. But you can still see there's a something there. Not very much, but you can actually change this. Let's go for the bar count, just reduce that, increase this, change those. And you can see you've got something there. If you put it down to zero, you can see the result there. I'm just gonna keep it like that. But you can also, of course, modify these values as well. Instead of Rx, you can put, say, five times Rx. So five times Rx, and you can see now you get a lot more intense lines, which you can see. And of course, you might think, well, I don't want it to be five all the time. What I want is a parameter, and that's what these are. Really useful, these parameters down here. So let's just go down here, and instead of that one, and of course I've used A and B. Well, I didn't use them personally, but what I can do, C. Let's just, you could, of course. Now, you know, because there's no C down here, and I've got C here, it suddenly loses all this. Well, you can add these. Now I'm going to go with a real, because I want like 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 1.3. So you can put real, click there, and now I've got a C. Now at the moment it's obviously zero. Defaults, I wish it would default to one, be more handy, but, but it defaults to zero. So now I've got C times Rx, and now I can vary these. So I'm just gonna, so as I do that, you can see what happens. So that's just the C. So you can get some nice blurry lines there using that approach. And you can still modify these, of course. You can always say 12 for that, and you can see maybe slightly more of that. Now also what you can do, you can do, of course, the same with RY. So you can get a nice effect, but I'm gonna go for D this time. That's why I created D to make sure I've got that. So D times RY. And you can see then you can manipulate that and you can get a nice sort of dotted design or you just vary it. Maybe go for 0.2 and so and so on. You can just create those sort of things. So now with that, you can also, you can, what you can do, you can modify even more. You can say, well, You've got a bracket around those signs. Well, I can say 3.4 times that. And you can see you can get a different effect there. Now, of course, I could use a parameter. Let's just, so another parameter, gain R. So click R and you get E there. And I'm gonna go with 1.3. And I'm just gonna put E there instead of 3.4. You can do whatever, you don't have to. You don't have to do that. You can just keep it as 3.4. You can always then edit it. These are not cast in stone, you can edit them. So you've got this lovely equation now, which you can, of course, you can modify it and add all kinds of different things as well. But what you can also do, you notice over here, you've got R, G and B. Now R, G and B means it's all applied to the red, green and blue channel, all exactly the same. Well, you can add different channels. So I'm just gonna add, now that one just, it sets it to initially to alpha channel, which is useful as well, so it's not to be ignored. But you can go, now I can then deselect that, and of course you now can see the underlying image. 
but I can now copy that and paste it into the other ones. So I'm just going to paste those in. So now what I've got, however, you notice I haven't set these things. So I need to go here, green and blue. And now you've got it back to exactly the same as it was before, which you think, well, that was a lot of use. However, what you can do, of course, is you can always add factor for these things. And I'm just going to, again, this is why I mean you can edit it. So you just 2.3, say 2.3. Maybe go for, let's just go for 4.5. And again, edit it again later if you don't want that value. Or maybe go for minus 1.2 times that and so on. So you can see you can create all kinds of different designs and you can still modify these settings here. And you can modify that and get some nice. But of course, what you can also do, you can modify the actual completely. So you can change it, maybe go down into here and say, you know what, I don't want C times that. I want two times that. And then you bring in, of course, a nice blur effect. But now you've got this additionally, and you don't have to go with two, you could go with 0 0.2. So 0 0.2, or maybe 0 0.5. And you could, if you want to, just add parameters for those. Well, obviously I'm not, but you could turn those into parameters. Go this one here, 0 0.8 times. And you can see the equation. You can just create all kinds of variations on this very quickly, easily by using this. And of course, you can modify the RX. Why am I using RX? I haven't explained RX and RY. It's great because you can move this back and forward. So you don't have to, you think, oh, you know what? Don't like it there. Just want it a bit there. And that's the thing for the RX and RY. It's relative X, relative Y. So you can move it around. And you can still modify these values here. You can still change this. So if you want it maybe more blurry, you can see that nice blurry effect there. And maybe change this. Go for the C, maybe change those. And you can just vary 2.2, 1.2, and so on. If you want to change this value, you see it goes up 3.2. It goes up plus 1. It doesn't go up 0 0.1, 0 0.2, which is a pity. I think it would be nice if they had changed it so it would do it like a smoother option. However, that's not available. So you've got here, you can, and of course, you can still modify these equations, add other variations, functions, etc to these as well, if you want to do that. And then of course, once you've finished it, once you've got your design, you think, well, you know what, I really love that design. You can save it. Go to the presets, and there's a whole, obviously all those presets, but what I want to do, just go here. Just right side, and then you go down, create preset. And I'm just going to go for color dots two, or whatever. And then you can put it to a category. Don't have to, so, but I'm going to go with color patterns, click create and apply. And then you've got your result there. And of course you can always modify it later. Also, another great thing is you can always add additional effects on top of this or go to layer and new live filter layer and down to colors and procedure texture. So you've got a live effect there as well, which is super useful because what you can do, procedural texture, go there and then you can go to the preset and that's why it's great saving a preset because otherwise color dots too, you get exactly the same. And of course, what you can then do is you can say, well, you know what? I don't want that value this time. I'm going to go with seven or maybe smoothing. I can change that, change this, change these settings up and down. Sometimes I must admit when I click those, it always seems to go the other way. So it's sometimes easier just, to, I think, to edit the field, just put value five. And also you've got blending modes. You can always turn around and say, you know what, let's go for normal, darken, color burn, linear burn, dark color. That creates a lovely effect. So darker color. And that's it. Close that. And now you can see what's happened. You've got the pixel layer there. You've got the procedural texture filter attached to that. You can always remove it if you don't want that. But you can see what happens. You can create this lovely effect. And also once you're happy with that, you can always, of course, merge the whole thing. Say so merge visible. Just turn it into a, just a standard pixel layer. Deselect those now. And then you can work, continue with that. So filters, go with blurs, distort, maybe deform, or some other filter as well. Let's just put that there, add some pins, and create all kinds, maybe go for similarity. I love similarity. 
and then just modify that. And you can see you can distort the design in all kinds of weird and wonderful ways, create some very interesting designs. And that's using procedural texture. So it's a great filter, definitely worth checking out. Check out the Infinity Photo help about that as well. Well, I hope you found this video of interest. There's also loads and loads of other videos on the Infinity Photos procedural texture filter on this channel. So please check those out. All different equations. And also, of course, this equation that I've just been showing, you can edit it. You can modify it in numerous ways. So if you want to change it, please feel free to change it. it doesn't have to be set in stone. Definitely not. Also, any other questions, please put in the comments below. Please put in, always great to hear. If you've got some questions about what I was doing wrong, maybe or what I was doing right, hopefully reasonably right, please put them in the comments below. Thank you much.